Hey everyone, Jillian Pocalo here, and I wanted to show you how you can make some prints using stuff that you probably have lying around your house. Um, chances are you've been doing a lot more cooking at home lately, I know I have, and so when I walk around my house and when I'm walking around my kitchen, I usually will ask myself, huh, can I print with that? And usually the answer is yes. And so I have a bunch of stuff that came from my kitchen. Um, and most of this I'm gonna use uh, later on for making dinner and I'm gonna save all of my food scraps, but I can always have fun with my food too. So I wanted to show you what I got here. Now I've got a bunch of different stuff and I don't know honestly how all of this is gonna turn out, but that's one of the fun things about printmaking is that you get to kind of experiment a little bit. So, when I'm going to cut into this, and by the way, for this step of this project, you might need an adult to help you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the spots where there's this thing called radial symmetry. So you can see how on my pepper, there's a center point, and then there are these four points outside of this. Um, I'm going to slice that in such a way that I can make prints from that. Same thing with my lemon. Um, now things that you notice aren't in front of me right now are things like tomatoes because if I were to cut into those they'd get really watery. I'm thinking about stuff that's not going to splurt all over me when I start to cut into it. So here we go. I am going to, well first of all you may have done printmaking like this and traditionally you might have done a potato print. So um, let me move some of this out of the way so I can show you how I'm going to slice this. Again, this would be for your adult to be nearby. So I'm going to slice my potato in half. I got some small potatoes. I'm going to make a little bit of a stew today. Um, and I could draw into that and cut into that if I wanted. But a really easy way to do this is to take a cookie cutter instead. And now I can make some really cool prints from this star shape. All right, so there's a little star shape that I just made. I'm gonna set that aside for now. Um, I also grabbed my pepper. So let me show you how I'm gonna slice this. And again, I'm gonna hold on to all of my food scraps for use in my dinner later on tonight, but for right now, I feel like making prints. So I'm gonna slice it along the bottom so that I can get a really interesting shape here. So I can make some really cool prints from just that piece. This I'm gonna set aside for dinner tonight. Okay, um, an onion. Well, I know I'm gonna be using this in my dinner tonight as well, um, but I know that if I slice this in, in some way, I'm gonna get a really interesting pattern. So I'm gonna slice just off the bottom here. Okay, and see those rings? I'm gonna try and see if I can pull a print off of those rings. This I'm going to set aside for dinner later on. Um, I have an ear of corn. This is going to make a really cool texture, so I'm going to hold on to that. I'm not going to do anything with that just yet. Uh, lemon. All right. I'm just going to cut off the bottom here. That lemon I'm going to set aside. Um, but I'm gonna see if I can pull a print off of some of that texture in there. And what I'm gonna do with my lemon, because it is a little bit more juicy, is I'm gonna put it down on top of my paper, my towel right here so I can kind of get rid of some of that juice. Um, now, I have pulled these really awesome prints off of lemons before um, and oranges, and I've let them dry out for a few days before I started to pull prints from them, and they turned out really, really, really well. So right now I'm just gonna see how dry I can get it while I let it sit here. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? Oh, I have an apple. So I could slice, normally when I slice an apple to eat it, I slice it this way, but I'm gonna try and see if I can get some of that symmetry this way. So we'll just cut it. All right, and you know what's really cool is I could actually do the same thing that I did with my potato print uh, with my apple. All right, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> that could be kind of cool. All right, I'm gonna get kind of experimental with this. I wanna keep those little pieces and see if I can pull an interesting print from those. Yeah, all right. 
So now comes the fun part. I've cut my veggies and now I can start pulling some prints. So if you tuned into Kid Print yesterday, you saw a really great project where you're able to print on, um, on tea towels using fabric inks. And what's really nice about Speedball is they have different inks for all different kinds of purposes. So today I'm gonna to use the block printing inks. Now these are really great, easy cleanup, and these are great for working on paper, and these are also really great for working with little ones. Um, so I'm gonna use those. And if I didn't have those inks at home, one other thing I could use is just plain old acrylic paint or tempera paint, but um, I think I'm gonna use my inks today. I really like the texture of the ink. All right, so the next thing I gotta figure out is what I want to print on, and I'm gonna print on some paper, and I'm gonna to start to roll out my ink. So let's see if you can see this really well. All right, so I'm gonna take my red. Today's a red day. I'm just gonna squirt a little bit out on my inking tray. Now I have a glass tabletop that I use for all of my printmaking at home um, in my studio. Um, I would, you could use wax paper, you could use um, parchment paper, you could use a bench hook. You can use a lot of different stuff to roll out the ink, but for me it's really convenient to have this glass slab here because then I can just clean it up right away. All right, so I'm going to take a brayer and I'm going to roll the ink out onto my ink slab. And so here's a little helpful hint. I'm not going to go right through that glob because then I'm going to get too much ink on my brayer. And then I might not pull a good print. So I'm just going to kind of go up to the brayer and pull down. And I'm looking to see just the right amount of ink on my brayer. And I'm looking for a specific sound. So let's see if you can tune in and, and hear it. So that good sound is that sort of, that sound right there. And if you take a look at the brayer, there are these little micro dots and there's some little tiny micro dots that are right here um, on the inking tray. And that's how I know I have enough ink on my brayer without being too, too intense um, and having too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and start pulling prints. I'm going to try by rolling out the ink onto my pepper this way. Now what's really nice about all of these inks is they're totally non-toxic. Um, so it's kind of nice when you're thinking about like working with inks that are interacting with foods, right? And so I'm going to Put some prints like this. Oh, that turned out pretty cool. I missed a little spot there, so I next time I ink up, I can just kind of put a little more ink right on that spot. Could I put it down like this on that, that part that I've uh, rolled out? Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing that says I can't. Just make it a little more messy, but if that's not a big deal to you, it's not a big deal to me. All right, so let's, let's put another one somewhere. I could even create a pattern doing this, right? See, now I'm thinking about different tiles um, and how tiles look on the sides of buildings or in you know bathrooms and stuff. And I could even start to create a whole tile design just based on this one pepper, right? Um, so what I can also do is I can see what happens if I ink up this spot. So I'm going to take some blue and I'm just going to put it down, put a little glop. I'm going to take another brayer. You could use the same brayer if you want, but I'm going to use a different one just so that that way I'm not um, getting the colors to mix just yet. And I'm going to roll out the ink again. Right now you can see the ink. It's kind of slidey and if I go really close to the um, screen, you can see that this brayer is also real, like the ink is really slidey and slippy on the, the surface of the brayer. So you want to look for those little tiny dots because that means that you've got the right amount of ink on your brayer without it being too, too much. All right, so now I'm just going to try and do, I don't know, this is experimental printmaking, guys. There's not really a right or wrong, as long as you're being safe with the knife. That's all that matters, right? 
So now I'm gonna try and just kinda, why don't I see if I can get this print to land inside one of these other things. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> There we go. All right, I'm making a something here, guys. All right, so that was the, my pepper. Let's try another veggie. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see if, I'm gonna leave my lemon alone until that dries out a little bit more. I wanna see if I can get that to work. So let's try, let's try the onion. I'm hoping when I print this that I can get the texture of that, that onion ring, but we'll see. Um, one other thing you can do is if you're really committed to getting a specific texture from one of these, so long as the cut that was made is nice and flat, you should be able to pick up a lot of that texture. So if you really wanted to get this onion and have the rings really show, as onions dry out, as lemons dry out, as all of these fruits and veggies dry out, you can get probably more texture than I'm going to get uh, from today, but we'll see, right? So I'm just gonna kinda squish that down. Oh, you know what? This is gonna work, and I think it's gonna be neat. I just have to be able to pick it up. All right, so see that there's some ink there. Let's see what we get. Oh, that's cool. It almost looks like a tree ring, right? Now I could ink it up this way too. You may get ink on your hands. Guess what? The nice thing about these block printing inks is it's all washable. So I'll usually keep, I have paper towels over here that help me to wash my hands really quickly. Um, but honestly, I don't mind a little bit of, I mind a little bit of texture and a little bit of ink on my hands at the moment, all right? Uh, so what else did I cut? I cut an onion, I cut a pepper. I could keep going with those textures. This is cool. I've seen this done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my corn on the cob. This is one of those decorative corn on the cobs. Um, I've had it for a while. I don't think it would be very tasty to use right now. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of roll out some ink on here in different spots. I think I'm gonna try and make some stripes. I think this will be kind of cool. All right, and now I'm just going to see if I can roll it across my paper. All right, that's kind of neat. So I can see that texture there from the corn. It creates a little bit of a grid pattern. And of course, I could go really crazy with this. I wanna see if I can get a little more texture here. Because at this point, we're just having fun. The things that I absolutely love about printmaking and printmakers is they tend to be a really um, a bunch of people that really like to experiment and um, and and that's part of what I love about printmaking is so much of it is about experimentation and seeing what works and seeing what doesn't and if it doesn't work you try it again and if it does work then you have found you've discovered something right so here, this one was kind of cool. I even started to get some purple in there because the two colors of ink started to mix together. So that's kind of cool. All right, what else do I got? Well, I've got a macaroni or a, some type of pasta here. I think that's a fusilli. I'm just gonna kind of roll that around in my ink blotch, see what we get. I'm gonna roll that out on here. This is uncooked by the way. I think that a cooked piece would probably flop around a little bit too much. All right, let's see if I can do a print from this. Oh, that's kind of neat. 
So I'm making a line texture from it just by rolling it across the paper. All right, let's see. I haven't done anything with my potato yet. Now, I remember in elementary, when I was in elementary school, so we're talking like a while ago, we did potato prints. And so um, if, you, if you were tuning in, you saw me slice the potato in half. Um, any size potato will work. And the easiest way to do this, if you've got a little one around, so I mean, I've seen some potato prints where you actually take a knife and you cut the pattern into the potato very carefully. Um, but if you're doing this with little ones, it's probably a lot easier to take a cookie cutter and to just slice that potato like that. Um, and then you can use that little potato piece for printmaking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda take this little guy and move it around and I'll take this little guy because I got it and I'll move that around. All right. And again, so long as the so long as the cut that you made is pretty nice and flat, you can get some really pretty predictable um, predictable prints here. So I'm gonna kinda make some star patterns. And notice what happens as I continue to make prints without re-inking. The prints get lighter and lighter and lighter as I go. And so then that, we, we call that usually a ghost print because the first print is like your inked up print. The second one tends to be the ghost print where you're just getting the ink that is left over and then as it gets lighter and lighter. So you can use that to your advantage too. And that's always a fun thing to play around with. Uh, one last thing was this apple, and I want to see if I can make something kind of cool with this. So I did not take it apart. Um, I still have all of these pieces, so I'm going to try something totally weird. Let's see if it works. Sometimes my weird ideas work out, sometimes they don't. And that's why I love printmaking, because I can always try something. And if it doesn't work, I can always try something different. All right, so I got, I'm going to ink up my... <laughs> star part of my apple and then I'm gonna see if I can ink up just the other parts using red and do a double print all at once and we'll see if this is a totally crazy idea or if this is a good one sometimes totally crazy ideas are good ones who knows ah, ha, ha, this is gonna be cool okay check this out folks Boom, that's pretty neat. Um, so the one last print I wanted to try and pull was from my lemon slice. And I've been letting it dry out on the, the napkin here so that I can hopefully get it to make a good print. Um, now, I don't know if it's gonna be too wet, but we'll see. One thing that I have tried before, and this may sound kind of gross, but it worked really well, was I, I wanted to pull a really good print from a lemon and an orange before, and so I sliced it up really you know, thin. I did this with star fruit too, because all of those citruses, um, I wanted to get that pattern. And so what I did was um, I cut it and I let it dry out in kitty litter for a few days. And the kitty litter dried it out to a point where I was able to really see the veins and the texture in there. And then I was able to pull a really good print. Um, obviously not used kitty litter, guys. So um, <laughs> what I can do is I can try and see if I'll be able to pull a print from this. All right, let's see. I'm going to do it this way to try and get some ink in all of those areas. And actually, I think this is going to work. Let's see. Oops, what do I have underneath? A piece of potato. All right, that's really cool. So I was able to get a good print from that. And now that I took away some of that ink, let's see if I can get a good ghost print from this. Oh, cool. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. 
So you can keep on experimenting. There's not really a right or wrong way to, um, to, to you know, there's, there are certain vegetables and, and um, fruits that will work better for this. Um, if I was gonna pull a print from like a piece of basil from my, my basil plant in my kitchen window, um, what I might wanna do is like kind of flatten it out for a few days and have it really flat and then I could pull a print from it. But I can show you uh, how to pull a leaf print while you're tuned in here. So there's two sides of a basil leaf and any type of leaf, right? There's the side that's got the veins and then there's the side that's got the, the um, that's smoother. And so I'm gonna try and see if I can pull a print from just the vein part of my leaf. Um, another way to tell is that the vein side is usually the lighter side of the leaf. It's usually the underside. So, um, and this will work with any types of leaves that you might find around your house or around your park or wherever you go. And just to show you this, I'm gonna use some black ink right here. Now, if you're thinking about how to do printmaking at home and you're a little concerned about cleanup or whatever, all of these things are totally um, clean up with soap and water. Um, but what I would always encourage you to do is if you're concerned about anything, just put some, put some newsprint down or some like those ads that always come in the mail. Um, put some of those down on top of your workspace and then it just makes cleanup a little bit easier and then you feel good because you're not sticking something right into the recycling bin you're actually getting to recycle it at home first all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and um, still going to look for those micro dots on my brayer and when I'm when I'm inking up my brayer I'll usually kind of lift the brayer up so that that way the roller part of the brayer is moving around just a little bit more and I get more ink on the brayer all right Ah, uh, so little basil leaf, you're gonna get a, get turned into a print soon. All right. Now I'm gonna do something kind of cool with this, hopefully. All right. So I have my little basil leaf and I've got my paper. I'm gonna put my basil leaf down. And I'm gonna use the flat part of my hand Kind of press it down and that is a very lovely little basil leaf print but wait there's more because there's also this print that may have offset onto the surface of the brayer and I don't know if you can see it but there's a little bit of leaf texture still on the brayer so I might actually be able to pull a print from that while I'm at it once I get that little piece of potato out of the way here And I don't, it's subtle, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see the leaf texture here imprinted and rolling out. So that's another fun um, experimental way to create prints uh, even, even after you've inked something up. So um, thank you so much for tuning in folks and it's great to see you again and I hope you have a great time making some prints and an even better time eating some of the yummy foods that you uh, that you make with the food that you cut up and see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.